Oh, hello, people. <clears throat> it is Monday here in Colorado. It's about quarter to two, almost quarter to two here. Uh, I had a wonderful weekend. It is raining outside. We're going to have snow tonight for sure. Windy and rainy and the rain turning into snow tonight. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to it, but not looking forward to it because I'm not going to be out in it. But my husband is out in it today working. So I just put prayers up for him every morning as he go to work and get him hope to get back safe through uh, all this wind and rain and snow tonight. So I thank you so much for being here today with me. Uh, I have to begin to tell you the news isn't good. And, uh, and I'll tell you a, a short testimony that I did this weekend. I had a really exciting weekend. But uh, seven detained in Paris... <clears throat> Belgium, the Bel I mean, seven detained in Belgium, you know, they having all these attacks in Paris and, and Belgium and all over, it's a lot going on. Begley reports are really kind of informative today, so I advise you to look at them. I'm going to post the links below. Begley is reporting 10,000 refugees, 10,000 refugees from Syria coming to Louisiana, Lu Louisiana, USA. Can you believe that? Louisiana, USA. And then we have seven states, seven United States governors are refusing to take the Syrian refugees. So we got all this going on. BP Earth Watch is reporting on that. And uh, also the Pentagon have set five Gedmo, G-I-T, you know, Magana, this jihadist thing. They have set five of them free. Uh, and Obama have set five of them free, free from Gitmo. So I will put that down as well, the links, and you can look at all of them. Make sure you see all the links, people. This is a very serious time, and they're not talking about it on the media right now. So I just got it from uh, these two people, BP Earthwatch and Paul Begley. And uh, I'm telling you, we are right at that time. We need to be about our father's business. We need to be really praying and watching and praying for our families and becoming closer and closer to Yeshua HaMashiach because the times are upon us now, people, that we need to know what God would have us to do right now. I was just listening to Charles Wheeling last week on one of his new uh, DVDs he sent me, and he was talking about it too as well, that people may have to just start buying them a van, you know, or buying them a vehicle, because they may have to live in that vehicle. If you don't want to go out and get a tent, or uh, have a, a, a trailer home, you know, a little trailer thing you can pull by your uh, truck or whatever, you may need to just have a vehicle like a van or SUV or something you can sleep in. You never know. You just never know what, what can happen right now in this world, in this country. It's just so much going on, so much going on. It's getting worse. It's heating up worse. Now, why would they want to bring these people over here? You tell me that. I already kind of know what's going on, what they're trying to do. They want to create a, an, an alarm and have all these things going on. So we need to be really clinging to Yahweh, knowing that he is the only one can save us, the only one can protect us, the only one can look after us with his supernatural power, his supernatural angels. So I was uh, talking to someone, uh, uh, talked to me this week, and I, I was telling them, you know, a lot of people don't like E.G. White, but I like her because she was talking for us in these times. I really believe that. And I'm going to read something the Lord inspired and gave me to read this morning. Actually, not last night he gave it to me. Because like I said, we have angels. Like I said, a little book, Who Are the Angels? We have demonic angels. We have holy angels that watch over us, God's angels. So, you know, this is the time to be working for our Father, working for our Father with all, with all, with, with all our hard minds and souls. And I'm going to read from Maranatha, the Lord is coming, where it says, work, work the cities from the outposts. Just a few, info, I'm not going to read the whole thing, just a few things from here I want to bring out. Because it's really true in where we are heading at and what we should be preparing right now, as quickly as possible. 
Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. That's really where we at. Come out from among these heathens and these, these, uh, these, these churches that's refusing to keep God's commandments and refusing to follow him and refusing to keep his Sabbaths and his, the things that he have called us to do. Amazingly, I would talk about it when I get through with this, but amazingly something happened to me this weekend. Amazingly how God works amazingly how he is working as god's commandment keeping people we must leave the cities as did enoch we must work in the cities but not dwell in them as far as possible uh i would you know it is not god's will that his people should settle in the cities where there is constant turmoil and confusion confusion the Lord desires his people to move into the country where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruit and vegetables and where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God in nature. Take your families away from the cities is my message, Ellen says. And I'm going to read on down here. The cities are to be worked from outposts, said the messenger of God. Shall not the cities be warned? Yes, not by God's people living in them, but by their visiting them to warn them of what is coming upon the earth. Okay, that's true. What is coming upon the earth? All these things coming upon the earth right now, people. All that lot. Let me see. I'm, I'm not about to skip that. Let me go up here and read this. When iniquity abounds in a nation, there is always to be heard some voice given warning and instruction. As the voice of Lot, remember Lot's wife, remember? The voice of Lot was heard in Sodom. Yet Lot could have preserved his family from many evils had he not made his home in this wicked, polluted city. All that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them, even if they had lived in a place some distance away from the city. See, distance away from the city. That's like me. I'm a kind of distance, distant away from the city. And I kind of, I used to be way out in the mountains, you know, way out in the mountains. And oh my God, what an experience that was. I really love it. But my, the high attitude kind of get to me now at my age. And, but I really love the high mountains. I love it. It's just so many angel visitations I had. I, I just used to just see things so clearly, hear God's voice so clearly and nature and it, it just it just it just give you such a a peace i i can't even begin to tell you the peace that you have when you're not clustered around a lot of people and and you just got nature around you mountains looking at you and trees all around you i had a property once with tons of trees on it and the enemy stole it from out, out under me when i got ill when i got lost my job from being sick and all those things i had an injury and I just love it so much, but I did move a little closer down to Mo Mountains. You know, I got mountains around me just the same here in the area I'm in now and trees. And, and I just love it. I just love it. I just say it's nothing like being in nature, nothing like being in nature where you can hear God's voice, where you can concentrate, where you can just appreciate, you know, his, his goodness, his creations, his you know, you just look upon him and think about him. Every time you look upon nature, you think about him, you know? So just like in those times, he, he, Enoch, did not make his abode with the wicked. He placed himself and his family where the atmosphere would be as pure as possible. Then at times he went forth to the inhabitants of the world with his God-given message. After proclaiming his message, he always took back with him to his place of retirement some who had received the warning. That's right. So we don't need to be in these big cluster of cities right now, people, with all the terrorist attacks. And look at Paris and all the things going to be coming here. Uh, America is almost in the same boat. And they bring in these refugees over here. Who knows what can happen, people, at any time? Who, who knows what can happen? We can't run and we can't hide. But we definitely can be away from these uh, uh, crowded cities where, you know, 
when earthquakes happen and things happen and you, you can't get out as quickly. I know Florida, like, you know, like this, <laughs> out and in, out and in, up and down, you know, up and down. You can't go over there unless you're a big old fish and can swim, like I said, you know. It's just the truth, people. I mean, it's just common sense. It's using your brain. It's using your mind. But it's, it's sound doctrine that God have instructed us. Yesterday, my husband took me out. I was so happy to get out of the house. And he took me up to uh, Salida, a city called Salida, which is about uh, maybe uh, 60 miles or more from here. And it was a wonderful drive because... You could see all the Arkansas River running along the rocks and the, and, and the mountains and nature. We even saw some wildlife side the road. I think it was six. We couldn't figure out whether it was six rant, uh, six elk or was it was uh, six sheep. I, could, I still can't figure out because the little tails was white in the back. And, and I couldn't tell because we were driving so fast and it was a lot of traffic. But I tell you what, I had a wonderful time going up to Salida and just looking at the Arkansas River run through the rocks and a few raft, rafters and a few fishermen on the side and, and looking at all the beautiful landscapings of God's beauty. And uh, it was just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And on my way up, I know the Lord was speaking to me because, you know, I always be looking for that opportunity to witness to somebody, to, to share the gospel or to share the end time message with somebody. And so I walked into this Walmart up there, a beautiful Walmart. They have just not, they haven't been up there that long. And it was beautiful to be in there. And I, I soon I got out of my car, parked my car and go inside I see the, I meet this gentleman, this black gentleman, and um, he come up to me, and I go up to him, and I say, oh, you're a man of God. I say, you're a man of God. And he said, yes, I've been waiting for you. He said, I saw you getting out of your car. I was waiting for you. I mean, you know, I don't know, people. I mean, God is just amazing, isn't he? And he said, I've been waiting for you. I mean, I just, I just love how God connects that way. You know, how he connects his people and so I got a chance to talk to him, and, and we got to talk about the Lord a little bit and, <clears throat> and shared the books with him, shared the books with him. He was so happy to get them. What's behind the New World Order? The perfect storm is coming. I told him to take a copy for his wife, and, and it was just amazing how God just set people right in your way, right in your pathway to meet. And what amazed me was he said he was waiting for me. I mean, he was waiting for me. So I said, you know, maybe that is the secret. Maybe God is talking to these people when I meet them that way. Maybe he is telling them, hey, you're going to meet this lady, you know. Maybe he's telling them the same thing, too. I just thought that was exciting, exciting, exciting. I love that I had that opportunity yesterday. So I'm going to just read from Romans a little bit, not a lot. <clears throat> From Romans here, from Romans 5, 12 and 13. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, that for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, has abounded unto many. So people, that's what I mean. We we really need to get receive the gift. We need to receive the gift. We need to give our life to Jesus Christ. We need to just <clears throat> repent. And if you haven't never given your life to Jesus Christ, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Right now is the time. With all these things coming on the earth right now before us, right in our face, we need to be ready. If I die tomorrow, I I have a little, I, I you know I have like that hope that I would be in my father's kingdom. And we need to know that that opportunity is for us now, today. So give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him change your DNA. 
Father, just be with the people watching the video today, Father. Be with them in a mighty way, Father. Just help them come to you, Father. Bow before you and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Father. Me and all my sins, I give them to you right now. I ask that you touch my body. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can have a new DNA. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity for them. I bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. I bind all evil spirits on assignment against the people watching this video today, against their homes, their marriages, their jobs, Father, their communities, Father. Touch their hearts, their minds. Show them what they would have to do right now, Father, what you would have them to do for preparation right now. And I ask it all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And people, I just ask that you continually read your word, your Bible, study to show yourselves approved. This is going to be a short video today. I have, um, I just have so many things I'm thinking about, but uh, I just tell you right now to pray for me, pray for my families, and just pray that we can count these freedoms, because these freedoms are dying. These freedoms are leaving us in this country, and we need to be really ready so we won't be left behind, as they say. And I don't really believe in some of the conceptions of, uh, you know, pre-trib and all that. But I'm just saying be left. Don't You don't want to be left behind because, like I said, you can go out your door any moment and you may not never return again alive. So you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Make sure you see all the links below. This weekend we had that asteroid pass over us real close, a new asteroid, but I never heard no more information on it. So when I hear information on it, I will post them on my video, probably on the next video. And um, I just ask that you have a blessed Monday, and I'll see you again. Amen and amen. May God bless you, richly bless you. Amen and amen.